Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to a, hopefully a wonderful night of music making. Um, these students have been working incredibly hard um, over the last couple months uh, since we last saw you at Christmas time uh, to be preparing this uh, program for you tonight. Uh, it'll be a little shorter than Christmas and what we'll have in the spring because um, we do not have our elementary ensembles with us. We just have our high school choir and high school band. Um, so to kick off this evening, I'd like to invite uh, Isaiah Hatchet up from our symphonic band to lead us in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything you've given us. Lord, we thank you that we can honor you through singing and instruments and everything else. Lord, we just pray peace over these people performing. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the first piece that we will be uh, performing for you tonight is uh, we're going to start with the high school choir, and it is called Sing Dem Heron, and it is by a composer, Michael Praetorius, uh, who was very prominent in the transition between the Renaissance period to the Baroque period uh, of music. Uh, and this piece is not in English. Uh, this is actually a... Uh, German piece, and it translates to, sing to the Lord, alleluia. We all love him, praise to his name, sing it with timbrel and harp. So timbrel being uh, a historical instrument similar to a tambourine, um, but that is the words, the text that you will be hearing, uh, and we will start in unison, and then if you're familiar with music, uh, we will go into a round and then finish with a closing uh, kind of tagline at the end. So please enjoy Sing Dem Heron by Michael Pretorius. So something a little bit different than uh, maybe we're used to. Um, stole that idea from uh, my time at Ohio State where I sang in the men's glee club and we processed in a lot. Um, and it was always a really cool thing to go, wait, where's the choir? And then all of a sudden they're behind you and now they're in between you. And so um, kind of trying to bring some of those traditions uh, here to FCA. Uh, so the next piece, uh, total different end of the spectrum uh, in terms of the time period. This is a more contemporary piece written uh, around 2004 after the uh, Asian tsunami uh, by composer Eliza Gilkison. Uh, and then Craig Hella Johnson, who is the leader of a famous vocal ensemble, uh, rearranged it for that group. Uh, and that's the version that we are singing tonight. Uh, and 
the composer wrote it in terms of uh, dedicating it to uh, victims and survivors of natural disasters. Um, so you'll hear a lot throughout of various uh, suspensions and resolutions. Uh, so you'll hear these chords where we get a lot of tension and then it'll release. Um, so we hope you enjoy Requiem. one of my favorite choral pieces. So, and I think for many of us here in the choir, uh, it's become one of their favorites as well. Am, am I wrong? Okay, all right. 
So now uh, for something a little bit different, remaining in the English side, um, but now we're going to be going kind of Shakespearean English. So this piece that we are going to sing now uh, is called Three Madrigals by Emma Lou Deemer, and it is a work presented in three separate movements, uh, but presented as one whole. Um, so first movement being, O Mistress Mine, Where Are You Roaming? Two, being take, oh, take those lips away. And three, sigh no more, ladies, sigh no more. Now, uh, each movement will have a slightly different flavor, uh, but we present them as one. So we ask that you hold your applause until the end of the third movement. So without further ado, Three Madrigals by Emma Lou Deemer.
So I uh, want to take a moment and recognize as well, um, we have Miss Mrs. Anastasia Schonk, who is a graduate of FCA, class of 2013, uh, who was accompanying us on piano. So uh, can we give her one more round of applause? <laughs> She's been coming in, coming in the last couple weeks uh, uh, when we've got our full choir um, to rehearse with us. Um, so we really appreciate her taking time out of her, her busy schedule to be here with us, okay? Um, so as the band comes up and gets set up, a uh, couple of announcements. On March 28th, we will have a couple of uh, various meetings. Uh, at six o'clock, anybody who is going to the Kings Island trip for these two ensembles, which uh, if you haven't been checking your emails, which you're here, so I assume you have been, uh, we are going taking both of these groups to Kings Island for Music in the Parks uh, on May 20th. Uh, and there will be a lot more information coming out. Um, we're going to have that parent meeting on March 28th at 6 o'clock out in the band barn or the armory, however you want to refer to it. But that's that building. If you walk straight out door B um, and go through the blue door, um, that's where the band has our, our regular uh, class time. Uh, and so we'll have uh, information meeting about all of that, uh, info about some fundraisers to fundraise for that trip. Um, so, and all of that should be coming out um, around that time. Then at seven o'clock that same evening, uh, we will be having a marching band meeting for next fall. Um, there's a lot of things being added to the schedule for next year, some new things that we're gonna be doing. Um, and, and so we just wanna get everybody in kind of in one room uh, and talk about those expectations, those schedule things, um, uniform parts that we might need to order, all of those logistics um, and kind of get a lot of that out there um, and on everybody's radar. Um, so that's March 28th. Um, if any, any of you also have uh, fourth graders, that will also be when uh, at five o'clock that evening having a new band parent meeting um, after we do fittings over the next couple weeks. So, and that I'll have some information as well about the, the beginner choir program, but a lot of that information will be tailored toward the band side of things. So um, more to come, I'll send out some emails later. So, uh, looks like the band is up here. Go ahead and warm up a little bit, guys, and then we'll tune. So the first uh, band piece this evening is a classic in the band uh, repertoire. Uh, how many of you have heard of John Philip Sousa? So very traditional in the band world, um, kind of what got our start moving from kind of the orchestral, orchestral realm into the wind band world um, was the, the band and the marching band, uh, and Sousa is one of the greats, uh, known as the March King. This is his famous march called The Thunderer.
right, so the uh, impetus to add this concert uh, into our schedule uh, is because around this time of year, bands and choirs and orchestras from all over the state um, participate in an event sponsored by the Ohio Music Educators Association called the Large Group Adjudicated Event. And uh, this will be the first time, I believe, in FCA history that uh, we're going to take the band to large group district contest this Saturday over at Taze Valley High School. And what that all entails is we'll get there early in the morning, we'll warm up, and then we'll actually go out, up onto the stage We'll perform the three songs that we're playing for you tonight, uh, and there will be three adjudicators uh, or judges sitting out in the house with scores, watching our music, giving us feedback and critiques, and they'll have a little recorder in front of them, uh, giving us feedback all throughout, but then we'll get those back later and we can listen to them. And it's really cool because you can hear the band and the comments all at the same time, um, which is really nice. You get kind of that live uh, feedback in a recorded sense. Um, but then after the, the performance, We'll go into a separate room, be handed a brand new piece of music that we've never seen before. We'll have four minutes for students to silently study and myself to silently study. And then four minutes where I can kind of help guide them through some things, um, talk them through it. And, um, and then at the end of that eight minute total, we have to play it down top to bottom as perfectly as we can. Um, and it's a real good way to kind of test ourselves and, and push ourselves uh, on knowing, you know, where um, strengths and weaknesses are in, in terms of uh, our ability to read our sheet music. And there's an adjudicator in there giving us feedback and comments, and sometimes they'll clinic afterwards, and um, really good experience that way. So uh, we've been practicing this in class uh, several days a week uh, leading up to this performance, um, but we are going to do that live for you tonight um, to kind of give you a glimpse into what that process looks like, uh, because the the performance is open to everybody. You can go and sit in the auditorium and, and watch our performance, but when we go back into the site reading room, it is a closed room. Um, our uh, administrators from the school are allowed in, but other than that, it's students and the directors, and that's it. Um, so we want to give you a little glimpse as to what that will look like. Um, and a funny story, I, we, I talked to them about this yesterday. I was like, guys, I'm thinking about doing this at the concert tomorrow. Um, what's your thoughts? And they were like, yeah, okay, sure. Well, and then today, they were, they were like, wait, we're doing what today? And I'm like, yep, it'll be fine. So uh, they've been sounding great all the times that we've practiced. So I, I have full confidence that it'll sound great now. So um, I actually have Miss Abigail Lewis is going to be our timer and kind of giving me, hey, this is the um, how much time you have left. So, and I should also add, in that eight minutes, we aren't allowed to play anything. I can do a lot of other things, but I can't have them play their instruments until we start top to bottom. So this will be the sight reading process, um, and Mr. Morris will leave the mic on throughout this. All right, give us a countdown, Abby.
So what is our key signature? Concert E flat, good. All right, and what's our time signature? Cut time, so we gotta be, make sure that we're feeling that big beat, okay? Uh, as we go through um, tempos, moderate march tempo, so a little slower than the Thunderer. Um, uh, so big intro, and then what do we have to watch out for at five? A repeat, yeah, and so we get to that first ending, we read through, and where we go back to where? Five. Back to five, okay? And then when you get to measure 16, where do you go? Second ending to 21, good, okay? Um, let us sizzle and button the first four measures. And one, two, sizzle, and Good, okay, do that one more time. Uh, just like we do in the Thunderer, start a little bit softer so we can have a bit of a crescendo. And one, two, ready. Good, and then bring that back as soon as you get to five, back to a mezzo forte, okay? Um, we get that, that same rhythm uh, quite a lot throughout this. So start right at five. Imagine that this is the first time. One, two, ready. And let's keep going here. Uh, if we jump over to 22, um, sizzle and button just uh, those two measures. Okay, right at 22. One, two, ready, and. Okay, and then it's on to percussion for the next two measures. Okay, one and a two, and one and two, and one. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, good. Well, let's keep going. Um, when we get to measure 29, what's it say above our, of above our music? smoothly, okay? So uh, we gotta make sure that we make that big contrast uh, when we get there, all right? Um, and the instruments leading that is gonna be the measure before we got clarinets and alto sax, okay? Um, so making sure that we get D, 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 D uh, is different than what we had before, okay? Um, let's keep going here. Um, uh, 49, okay, drops down uh, instrumentation-wise, okay? So we have um, some low voices happening, um, so make sure that you're counting through your rests carefully when we get there. Um, and then leading into 57, big old crescendo, okay? So then 57 to the end is big and full um, and kind of triumphant. So let's start sizzle button at 49. Thank you, here we go, sizzle button 49, one, two, Ready and two measures, big old fat quarter notes right on, on the downbeat of each one. Okay? Um, good. Questions? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So as we go through, remember I can call out measure numbers, I can count rhythms, all of that kind of stuff. Okay? So if you get lost, where should your eyes go? Come up here. Yeah. Okay. Good. Ready?
a shot, guys. All right. So they've never seen that before, uh, and that's, that's what that process will look like. Um, we'll have some time to talk through some things, and then we just go straight on through. So the goal is to not stop. Um, we can if we really need to, but that's, what, that's how that goes. So a lot of pressure, um, but hopefully a good and enjoyable experience. So <clears throat> the next piece um, is what is our required piece. Um, so every group falls under a different class, and that goes based on school size. So the largest schools are double A, and then it goes double A, A, B, and C. Um, and based on our school size, we are a class C band, um, which means that we pick from a certain set of music that you have to have a required piece, you have to have a march, and then a director's choice um, piece in the performance. <coughs> so our required piece is called Shackleford Banks by composer Jay Bocook. Uh, and this is a uh, somewhat of a programmatic piece, meaning that uh, it's trying to uh, elicit a bit of a story. Um, so uh, it's based on an uninhabited island off the coast of North Carolina, where there are wild horses that run the shores. Um, and so this piece has a bit of a Western flair to it um, and kind of reminiscent of a lot of those old time Western scores. So, and I believe this, this I think is the favorite. Is that correct, guys? This is their favorite out of the three. Um, so hopefully you enjoy Shackelford Banks. Thank you. 
So our final piece uh, for you this evening is also a programmatic work. Um, this one tells a little bit more of a story that is rooted in um, a historical fashion. Uh, back in the Civil War, the uh, Confederates had a lot of the railways under their control. Uh, and so what a, a group of Union soldiers did is they went down and one morning while all the Confederates and the um, uh, conductor were all in eating breakfast at the hotel, went in and uncoupled all the passenger cars and took the, the engine, the, the, wood, uh, the wood car, uh, and several cars worth of Confederate supplies, and they took off with it. And all along the way, we're trying to do as much damage as possible to that rail system uh, to try and inhibit what the Confederates were able to do. And so the conductor, hearing the steam release on the engine, was like, oh, shoot, it's time to go. Like, we got to go get something's not right. And so they took off and uh, were at first on foot and then uh, enlisted as many people on the Confederate side as they could to try and catch these guys. Uh, and so this piece, you'll hear a lot of kind of locomotive sounds going on uh, all throughout and kind of this ebbing and flowing of trains speeding and slowing and all, all of that sort of imagery. Uh, it's, it's a very fun piece to put together. Um, so uh, please enjoy The Great Locomotive Chase by Robert W. Smith.
have a seat. So that concludes our concert. Um, we'll finish that up, and then we go off into the site reading room. And then once we're done um, at, at OMEA on Saturday, we'll come back. And uh, 4 to 8, if you are hungry for some Chipotle, the Band Boosters is having a fundraiser at the Memorial Driver location. Out on your way out, feel free to take some flyers, um, so that way you can get credit for that. Um, th and the, the Band Boosters will get 33% of the sales from those flyers. Um, and if anybody's interested in becoming a member of the Band Boosters, that is our parent organization um, that uh, helps organize a lot of our events, um, especially around band camp time uh, and marching season and all of that, where we've got lots of events uh, almost every week. Um, we could really use a lot more folks to come and, and help, so it's not just this, the same four of us making this, the decisions for everybody all the time. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, find one of our band boosters. We've got uh, Angela Hammond, our secretary, and Jeff Lewis, our treasurer. Um, I don't think the, uh, the Coopers were able to make it this evening, um, but Aaron Cooper uh, is our band booster president as well. So uh, any of them can tell you all about it uh, or find me afterwards. Um, so without further ado, uh, can we give one more round of applause to our choir and all of their hard work? and to our band and wishing them luck on their performance on Saturday. So, and before I send you out, um, I'm inviting uh, Paige up from our choir uh, to lead us in a closing prayer. Uh, thank you all for coming out uh, and spending your evening with us and please drive safe getting home. Thank you very much. Let's bow, bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you for this night that we could all display our talents in front of everyone. Um, I pray and I thank you for the drives here. I just pray that we all make it home safely. And um, I pray that the music w that was heard tonight, I just pray that it spoke to people. And I just pray that they enjoyed it and they go home with joy in their hearts. And um, I pray that um, they'll influence all the students that... Um, perform tonight, I pray that we influence others to join our um, groups. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Drive safe. <laughs>